Again, my name is Richard Crane. I'm here on behalf of the New Hampshire Police Association. We're opposed to um, all three of these bills. I wasn't going to um, add anything to my testimony from earlier, so I get basically speak for itself. But there were a couple things that I did want to address. One of them is the conflict of interest. I'm not here to save my job. I'm a police chief, and in my community where I grew up, we have to prepare a budget, and we have to work with limited resources so that our community doesn't have to spend more. My citizens in my town don't have to spend more for law enforcement. If this bills, any of these bills, it will cost my community more money than the citizens of New Hampshire more money. The offense to that I'm trying to protect my job by keeping marijuana illegal so we can go and arrest people. There is no pleasure whatsoever that me nor my officers get from having to arrest somebody. That, even, even in the case of a child molester who has molested his son, which I've investigated numerous ones of those, because what we don't think about, or what some other people don't think about, is that that little boy who's six years old, who one day his father was there, the next day he's not, because of the terrible thing that he did to him. So we take no pleasure in that whatsoever. We've taken an oath to uphold the law and to protect people, even at the cost of our own lives. So I take offense to that. The other reason I came up is Representative Robertson um, had a question he wasn't able to ask me earlier. Here. Oh, fine. I'm 80 years old, I can't remember my name. I'd ask you. My name is Tim. Thank you. Timmy. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I still haven't heard anybody explain that 25% of the world's prisoners in our prison if it doesn't have anything to do with, with the drug war. I think there are definitely people in our prison who are dealing drugs, dealing um, maybe even marijuana in those cases that, that are going to prison for that. What I've seen in my county, when we're dealing with people who, um, we just had a case last year where we had a, a huge um, marijuana operation that the people are dealing. I believe the sentence um, on the the one individual who was the, the main kingpin um, was county jail. But again, this is somebody who was supplying pounds of marijuana uh, to our communities, not only in Enfield, but in Lebanon and, and the surrounding towns. And he didn't receive a, um, let me back up a little bit. I believe it was a one, so he is in prison for that one year, one to four year sentence in the state prison, I believe is what his uh, penalty was. Um, as far as possession, I think somebody, you know, what I've seen in 25 years is somebody who, um, I want to say this gentleman was probably in his 40s. He probably been arrested 20 some odd times. And the judge finally sent him up to the House of Correction for 30 days. Well, that, that, yeah, that's not, not the point I'm trying to make is why do we have such a huge prison population compared to Russia and China? and all the other countries in the world. I think we locked a lot of people up. Yes. <laughs> I'm asking you why. If it's they not the drug war, what, what is it? Because those countries got Because they rape and murder. Oh. Okay. They don't do oh. that. Okay. 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 Representative Bowen. Thank you. The answer is we have more laws making them guilty of doing bad things. But my question is this. My question is this. And Representative Fields had took issue with some of the opinion data stated earlier. But let's, as if you're in court and I'm a lawyer, let's say as a given that these opinion polls are correct, that by a 48 to 45 margin, people in New Hampshire want this legalized, that 53% of them want it controlled at the state level, that 57% nationwide want it that way. Do we not, let's say the people of New Hampshire went to the polls, some states like Colorado and Washington have the right for people to go to the polls, let's say they voted to legalize this, would it not then be your job not to try to carry on your opposition? As a police officer, would your job not be then 
to enforce the will of the people. My job as a police officer would be to enforce the law. And the law would no longer exist. That's correct. Under state law. Correct. So do you have no concerns for what the people really want? Let's assume, again, that they do want to get rid of these laws. I think there's a portion of the people that want to do that. No, the given is that the opinion polls are 100%. correct. What? 100% No, no, we don't take opinion polls ever on 100%. Obama won with 53%. Let's say 53% wanted to get rid of this law. Would that not convince you? I know what I see on the street and what I'm doing with that. If you're asking me if, if my opinion would change based on, you know, 90%, Population says that it should be legal. No, I still. So have to my say question, Madam Chair, is if 50 plus 1 percent of the people wanted to get rid of these lies, then should we not do it? If they did, we would. You have 400 people that have to vote on this. That's correct because we don't have a referendum. But if 200 plus 1 and 12 senators plus 1 voted to get rid of this, would that not tell you that that's the will of the people and that you should obey the will of the people? I'm just wondering if we have police officers, officers who are not intent on doing what the people want. But, but the, the law is in, on the books now, and he's doing what he, he the law says he's supposed to My do. My question is a hypothetical, yeah. which is perfectly... Well, he did say, put it he did say that he would abide by the law. He did say that. Yes. Now, well, would you believe that we're dealing with this issue right now, until it goes through the House and the Senate, you're obeying the law right now. So unless we change it here, well, we have a bill that says we're going to put it to the people. So in the meantime, you're doing your job. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, and I'm proud of it. Yeah, exactly. I have one other question, Madam Chair. Does it relate to this bill 337? It relates to a statement he made, so it obviously uh, relates to this, this bill. statement. Uh, Not in his testimony five minutes ago, he said that if this bill were to pass, it would cost all the communities more money. Since you're going to be spending less money trying to enforce laws that, in my opinion, shouldn't exist, since we're going to be jailing fewer people, what is your empirical evidence that it would cost the taxpayers of my ward more money? I will get you that information. It's well, you're here now. I'd like the information. You made a statement. Please defend that. He has it on the report, he said. The, I mean, <laughs> the, the consequences of the increased use the legalization of marijuana. Similar to what we're seeing with alcohol abuse, the increase in the, the accidents, things like that. I can give you that information that spell it out in dollars and cents. I there, don't have those numbers with me today. There is data, Madam Chair, that shows if people smoke marijuana, they would drink less alcohol. That's enough. Is he going to answer the question? How can he answer it for you? He told he you he had a report and he would bring it in. But what he made more the do you want? should be able to defend it. Well, he came when he sent his stuff in. No, no, so no, no. I want him to answer the question, does he not believe that if people drink less alcohol, they're going to be committing less serious crimes, and therefore it would cost less money? I can't answer a uh, hypothetical question, sir. Madam Chair, question? Yes. Do you realize that after Prohibition ended, 35% of the drinkers never went back to alcohol, they stayed with marijuana, which was not illegal till the 60s or 70s? And I don't have that, I, I don't, I'm not familiar with that statement or those studies. So can you provide that to us? <laughs> sure. Okay. I'm wondering. Thank you very much, Chief. We'll call Representative Michael Casillas.